everybody and welcome to the ADZ show we're going to be rounding up the top 10 movie scores of 2015 and we're talking about those movie scores that you can listen to outside of the film that motivate you or encourage you or just make you reflect on life or pretty much just get you through the day in general because they're that awesome and while this is my personal list and I have them all in a playlist in the description I am definitely curious to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section as we get into my top 10, starting off with number 10. Now, Kara is a film that feels like Todd Haynes found a time capsule, retrieved this film from there, and then released it because this thing embodies the time period perfectly with the grainy cinematography and the amazingly beautiful production design, and even more so, the score that we have here. That's super simple because it's not that big of a score, but it comes from Carter Burwell, who is able to, with the opening theme, embody what it feels like to be super nervous when you're talking to someone who you're infatuated with and when you're listening to the song play it when you're about to talk to someone who you like and it's just going to resonate with your heartbeat staying on that theme of emotions we have a score that comes from one of the most emotional movies of 2015 because it literally dealt with emotions and that is from inside out with the composer being michael giacchino giacchino all i know is that i've been hooked to this guy's music since lost and this man comes out with another fantastic album that embodies the emotions that we feel for every Pixar movie that we see. He did great work for Up, and he continues it here with the main theme being Bundle of Joy, really being able to embody that innocence, but at the same time, all of the five emotions that a person can feel. At number eight, we have the veteran Ennio Morricone coming in with another Western, which he has not done in, I believe, 40 years, but he comes in to do the score for The Hateful Eight, and he does a phenomenal job. Now, granted, it was almost not eligible for an Oscar because part of it was things that were not used for John Carpenter's The Thing, but that doesn't take away from how awesome it is, especially when you have my favorite, which is La Ultima Dilingenza, which is which has a theme that you hear in the overture and all the way throughout the whole film, which really embodies what I've been saying is The Hateful Eight, which is a Western version of Clue. And this man is able to create a score that keeps you on your toes, trying to guess who in the world are the bad guys. At number seven, I have Johan Johansson's score for Sicario. And this is a movie where you're on edge the whole time, the whole thing relies on tension and his score throughout is able to build on that tension, especially with the beast. This is a score that feels like the most tense version of the Jaws theme. It feels like you have one emotion and then vroom, it comes out and just completely changes everything that's happening. It embodies everything beautifully and it is again a score that when you're feeling one emotion and you think everything's going okay, that thing happens, and then all of a sudden everything has just gone awry. At number six, I have a score for a movie that I don't even think was good in any way, shape, or form, but we're looking at the scores, and the score for Lost River was phenomenal, and it comes from Johnny Lewis, who did work on the score for Drive, and if you like the score for Drive, which was one of my favorites of that year, you're going to entirely love this score, even if you don't fall in love with the movie, because Johnny Lewis, who is a man who does the whole score, but he's got like five different groups that he's a part of, and he renames a bunch of these different songs depending on the group that he's a part of. It's really confusing, but nonetheless, the dude does a phenomenal job, especially in his band Chromatics, which is in the score with, it's a theme called Yes, that's all, it's good, it's very confusing, but his theme Yes is beautiful in this movie because it embodies what you're looking at these characters, where they're looking around and reflecting how bad their scenario is, or just reflecting where they are in life, and when you listen to the song, it makes you reflect on what you're doing with your life as well and just all your surroundings and everything around you. At number five, I'm sticking with that very synth type style with It Follows. This is one that comes from the artist Disaster Piece and this is a movie that again, I've had problems with the script and stuff like that, but the tone is something I have never complained about. And Disaster Piece, especially with the title sequence, is able to really just embody what this movie is and that's not knowing when someone is following you and just having you be tense the entire time and paranoid. Now at number four, I have John Williams scores for Star Wars The Force Awakens. And I know a lot of people would have it higher on their list, but I'm looking at it from the new scores that were composed for 2015, not a compilation of the old scores. And this one was another score that almost was ineligible at the Oscars because it relied a lot of the on the old music, but looking at Ray's theme and a bunch of the new things that he was able to do with this, I think it definitely deserves to be on the list. Just not as high but still is able to give you that nostalgia factor of all of the original movies. At number three, I have Daniel Pemberton's score for Steve Jobs. And this was a movie that I said was like a trilogy for Steve Jobs. This man makes three scores for one movie. And it's the factor of having the movie be split into three different things. And it advances. You see Danny Boyle was able to go from different millimeter cameras to then digital to show the technology and how it advances. 
This man comes in and does three different scores and where the first one is all about this 80s, you know, synth style and then the middle part, which is about revenge, he makes it into an opera. And then the last part is this very cold yet subtle reflection of this man who's looking back at everything that he's made. And it is a phenomenal score. The way he just composes this whole thing truly is art in and of itself. And not only makes the movie better, but makes it a score that you can listen to when you're trying to come up with something put this bad boy on and listen to it's not working that that thing will get you thinking and number two i have the score from mad max fury road coming from junkie xl a man who worked on man of steel he's working on batman v superman and this dude is just phenomenal he even has a youtube channel where he tells you all of his secrets this man just wants to make good music and he wants you to make good music as well and what he did with mad max fury road especially with brothers in arms is a soundtrack that not only makes you remember that cool flaming guitar player that's just there when they're on the battlefront, but more so is, is a score that invigorates you. It's a score that had YouTubers breaking their beds. It's a score that is going to remain with you just as the visuals of this movie remain with you because it is one of the best scores of 2015. But coming in at number one is a score that's very reminiscent of the themes from Bill Conti's original score for Rocky. And we all know that theme but Ludwig Gorenson said, you know what, for Creed, it's a spinoff. I'm going to do something different, but still keep those themes of being an underdog, of coming back and making something of yourself. And what he does, especially with If You Fight, I'll Fight, this is one of the best scores of 2015. It is one of my personal favorites. The whole score just invigorates you to be able to have that Rocky theme that we all know and then make something completely entirely different, but still be as impacting as that original Rocky theme is phenomenal. And usually you get scores that are really good and they don't have a soundtrack. Or they have a soundtrack and they don't really rely anything on the score. This is a score that's phenomenal. And then a soundtrack that's also just as great. And it's one of these scores and soundtracks that I have listened to almost on a daily basis because it is just that awesome. So there you go. Those are my picks for the top 10 movie scores of 2015. I'm curious your thoughts. You can definitely let me know down below in the comment section which ones you think stood out or which ones you just love the most and you listen to maybe on a daily basis. We can talk anything about movies and music down below in the comment section. But please don't forget to comment, to like, and to subscribe to continue to watch movies and listen to scores. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.